You know, a lot of people seem to assume that my favorite pastime is to watch movies all day because they associate me with the channel, when in reality, that's not the case. In fact, I have a lot of other hobbies I like to do in my spare time, one of which is read comic books. Now, I know I did a lot of superhero related stuff on my channel, but never have I ever did a comic book review before. So today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of reviewing a movie from the Golden Age, we're going to review a comic book from the Golden Age. And what better time to start off reviewing comic books than reviewing a classic little origin story to a superhero movie that's currently in theaters. In this case, we'll be taking a look at the first debut of Shazam, aka Captain Marvel. Now, I know exactly what you all might be thinking. But isn't Captain Marvel and Shazam two different characters from two different comic book companies? Well, kind of, sort of, it's a little bit complicated. Fawcett Comics, who owned Captain Marvel at the time, had a massive decline in comic book sales during the wake of World War II, so much so that they had to shut down their company as well as selling off their own intellectual properties. What resulted was a little bit of a confusion between DC and Marvel. You see, while Marvel was making their own character of the same name, they were unaware that a character named Captain Marvel even existed. So, to cause less confusion between the DC comic book character and the Marvel character, DC decided to rename the character to Shazam! <sighs> now, seeing that I don't have a physical copy of this comic book in particular, and that it is public domain, we're going to be going to the far regions of the internet to read this comic book. So, in the words of Jaime Tude, let's have a read. All right, so we see a little boy out on the street selling newspapers near a subway. Between you and me, I would have sold them near Firehouse Subs, but that's just my preference. Anyway, with all joking aside, we see a mysterious man in a fedora and trench coat as he starts talking to the poor little orphan boy. Why aren't you home in bed, son? I have no home, sir. I sleep in the subway station. It's warm there. Wow. Who would have thought that he would look this clean despite living at a subway station his whole entire life? I'm pretty sure they have complimentary showers down there. And because this kid clearly doesn't know what Stranger Danger is, he follows him down to a subway station where he gets on a train that looks like it came from Yellow Submarine. While he's down at the subway station, he comes across an old man who looks like he's auditioning to play God in an upcoming movie. Yeah, sorry to burst your bubble, old man, but that role has been taken by Morgan Freeman. He goes on to explain that he is a wizard who has been given powers by the Greek gods to fight against evil. And seeing that he is at an age where he can't fight evil like he used to, he decided to transfer his powers over to Billy. It's never explained in this particular issue why he chose Billy over the millions of children in the world, but I'm gonna take a wild guess that it must have been because he's stupid enough to follow the mysterious man down into the cave. Because that's a positive message for kids, isn't it? Hey kids, follow the sketchy stranger down to the subway station and you can get superpowers and possibly AIDS. He also shows Billy a screen projection of his life where his greedy uncle stole his fortune that was inherited to him by his dead parents. I can't quite put a finger on where I've heard the story before, but let's just say that must have been a rough series of unfortunate events for little Billy. He tells Billy in order to become Captain Marvel, he must speak the old wizard's name. Shazam! <laughs> So after transferring his power onto Billy, the old man gets killed in a wily e. Coyote type fashion as we never hear from him again. Now I understand the reason why he wants to pass down his powers onto another person, but what was the purpose of killing him off? Couldn't he have just been a mentor where he shows Billy how to use his powers? Also whatever happened to the mysterious man from earlier? Freaking creep. 
Anyway, the next morning, he comes across a couple of goons as he starts to overhear their little conversation. One of them refers to the mad scientist as their boss, which makes Billy even more suspicious. So after putting two and two together, he comes up to the conclusion that they must be working for the mad scientist who has taken over the local radio station for ransom. He goes to the office of Mr. Morris, the president who owns the radio station, and tells them all about what happened with the two henchmen from earlier. But seeing that he doesn't have any concrete evidence besides seeing them enter into a Sky Tower apartment, Mr. Morris doesn't believe a word he says. Knowing that Billy's claims are completely outlandish, he promises him a job at the radio station if he ever were to catch the mad scientist who was responsible for all this. Later that night, he transforms into Captain Marvel and heads over to investigate their little secret hideout. He catches a glimpse of the mad scientist, Dr. Savannah, talking to his goons via television screen. So wait, you're telling me that this guy, this guy right here invented Skype before Skype was even a thing? Dude, you know how much money you can make after manufacturing this? You will be a billionaire. People would give you money hand over fist over this stuff. I mean, forget the ransom. Go ahead and patent this thing. But of course, the radio stations refuse to pay Dr. Savannah the ransom, which he then orders his goons to scramble the radio station signals. But Captain Marvel crashes through the window and takes out both of the goons while destroying the radio silencer. Well, Savannah, that's the end of your radio silencer. But not the end of me. We'll meet again, Captain Marvel. Yes, Savannah, we will meet again. And when we do, you'll be behind prison walls. Or dead! Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what Zack Snyder would do if he ever directed Shazam. And so our origin story comes to a close as Billy tells Mr. Morris the whole story, minus the Captain Marvel part, and Mr. Morris gave him the job that he promised him. So that was the first debut of Shazam, aka Captain Marvel. And what did I think about it? It was kind of meh. Maybe it's because I wanted a little bit more substance out of a superhero origin story, but this one in particular was a little bit lackluster at best. I'm pretty sure that it was amazing for the time being, but it didn't really hold a candle to the other superhero origin stories I have read. The only positive thing I can give about this comic is that the artwork looks great, but that's about it. Bottom line, this was a dated origin story that really needed a makeover. What else can I say, but it's not my cup of tea. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Anyway guys, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.